Is it clear? Should I take the next step? Only if you do it parallelly in your notebook, you will be in a position to understand. So the second step, we try to organize the problem in table form. So table one, we try to organize the problem in table form. So we have four variables. So we create a table. It's a general structure. So manually, it is four columns are there. So I try to create a uh, table with the four columns or five. Some calculations also we have to do. So I create a very bigger table to do some calculations. So I'm going to do some calculations also. So I create a table. With the left hand side, whatever be the information, I'm going to keep it. So my x1 column, my x2 column, my x3 column, my x4 column, and some calculations which I am going to do, I call it as the ratio. So which I am going to do some calculation, I call it as a ratio. So we have x1, we have x2, we have x3, we have x4. So table one, I am organizing the data, whatever be the data in the problem here, we are going to convert into table format. On the left hand side, the new variable which is added, I gave a name called XB, that is decision basis. Okay, then CB and in textbooks and all they use the notation P also. So P that uh, stands for the third column. So I call it as P3, where a new variable is added, and the new variable which is added in the fourth column. So I place two things, P3 and P4. The corresponding objective function coefficients, objective function coefficients are denoted objective function coefficients. We use a symbol CI. decision variable and slack or something, we use the notation xb. Column, first column or second column or third column, columns we use the notation pa. Column 1 p1, column 2 p2 etc. So this is the summary which will be used in all the structured format. Then for the third column, so again for convenience, I write the objective function coefficient at the top. 40, 60, 0, and 0. Then the new variable which is added, which we call it as x3 equal to 400 with 20, 40, 1, 0. First row I have written. The first row x3 and the objective function 0, so I place the 0 also here. Because we are going to do some calculation, all these informations are required. <clears throat> Second row 40, 30, 0, 1, the new variable added x4, so I put it x4 equal to 600. And the objective function for x4 is 0, so I keep it here. So I just uh, posted whatever be the information available here, I put it in the table format. Is it clear? Any clarification up to this? No, sir, clear. The next one, we are going to compute. There is something called a net evaluation. Mathematically, this is called a net evaluation. I put it here, uh, net net evaluation. Net evaluation is nothing but opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. So we are going to compute what is the opportunity cost, what is the opportunity cost for the product one, what is the opportunity cost for the product two, 
what is the opportunity cost for the variable x3 what is the opportunity cost for x4 so the procedure is i told in the last session we will be taking the zero that is this column vector we will take for the first column we want to find out so for the first column first column first column i will be taking the c value zero and zero that vector i will multiply with the this vector 20 and 40 what will be the result if you multiply 0 into 20 0 plus 0 into 40 0 so net result is 0 then minus objective function coefficient So objective function coefficient I have written on the top. So zero, that is I take the C column. This is C column. This is column one, P one. So C column and P one I multiply. Then the net result is zero. Then objective function coefficient lesser. So that will give opportunity cost for the product one is minus forty. Is it clear? you will be repeating the same calculation in all the tables nearly 50% of your or course will contain this problem this kind of problem shall i proceed to second column then second column i am repeating the same calculation for the second column again i write the matrix 0 and 0 i multiply with the second column coefficient 40 and 30 so 0 into 40 0 into 30 so you get 0 plus 0 net result is 0 then minus objective function coefficient 60 you get minus 60 so i write here opportunity cost for the product 2 is minus 60 then similarly if you do the calculation opportunity cost here is 0 opportunity cost here is 0 so the net evaluation is giving an indication opportunity cost is higher for product 2 so you have to produce product 2 so to produce product 2 we are using a symbol marking the column marking the column as entering variable so in textbook they will be using the notation x2 entering x2 enters that is you have started producing x2 that is you have to consider the product you are having two resources grinding and packing roasting that is one section grinding and packing another one so the initial stage you are not produced anything next condition you are decided to produce only x2 one product flavor 2 so when i decide to produce flavor 2 i know that 40 minutes and 30 minutes required for roasting section grinding and packing roasting 400 minutes available so 400 by 40 it says you can produce 10 kg grinding and packing machine 600 minutes available 600 by 30 it says 20 kg you can produce so packing machine is saying 20 kg you can produce grinding is saying only 10 kg you can produce so what is feasible so the feasible is this is the one which is feasible so we choose we decided to use fully the grinding machine
entire grinding machine we wanted to use it and to produce product 2 that is the summary of table 2 x2 you are entering x2 product 2 product 2 you are producing when you start producing you are going to use the grinding machine full that is scenario analysis that is called analysis so what will be the scenario after that if you decided to do this what will be the scenario that is called the your table 2 any clarification in table 1 Parallelly, only if you do, you can understand. I hope you know the difficulty of a mathematics paper. You cannot practice it during the examination. You have to take some time now, so that it will get registered in your memory. Anybody? How many of you take the table one? How many of you keep table one in your notebook? Nobody. Taken, sir. Taken. Yes, sir, that uh, uh, selecting the minus sixteen, sir. Can you just explain the reason for selecting minus sixteen? This is called the net evaluation or opportunity cost. Okay. Uh, opportunity cost for the product one is forty. Minus stands for cost plus. Okay. Okay. Opportunity okay. cost is uh, for product one is minus forty. Opportunity cost for the product two is minus sixty. So opportunity cost is higher for producing product two. So now you are losing sixty rupees. Now you are losing forty rupees. Which one you want to recover? The more losses. Naturally, you will be trying to get more profit. Product two. That is the reason. Or you can take absolute maximum. Sir, opportunity cost minus forty. So you have done the calculation here. You have done zero from the matrix. It is zero. Zero minus forty. How did you write that forty, sir? Ah, x three is the new variable added. We don't know what is the variable. That is called the slack variable. That is what is yes. left off. Yes. 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 So x3 stands for if I keep x1 zero, no production. X2 zero, no production. I okay. get three equal to four hundred. Am I correct in the first equation? Okay. That means I didn't produce anything. So four hundred minutes are left out. That is the meaning. Okay. So x3 stands for how much time left out in the roasting machine? That is the meaning. Okay. X four second equation. If I substitute x one zero x two zero, what is x four? X four is six hundred. Six hundred. No production. Three hundred minutes. Four hundred minutes left out. Six hundred minutes left out. Yeah. Is it going to bring any value to you? No, sir. No. That is the reason we keep objective function coefficient for x three zero x four zero. Okay. What? what will bring value to you only product 1 and product 2 okay coffee shop coffee shop i will come to coffee shop not to see the mission only if i get product 1 or product 2 you will get revenue okay so that is the reason product 1 coefficient is 40 every 1 kg you are selling you will get 40 rupees okay Product two, every one kg you are selling, you get sixty rupees. Okay. Keeping mission, you are not going to get anything. Zero. Okay. Mission, keeping mission hours, second mission hours, you are not going to get anything. So that okay. is the, the objective function. Okay. So the table one, it is giving the starting condition. That is, what is the starting condition? X one zero, X two zero. Hmm. X one zero, X two zero means the table you see that X three is four hundred, X four is six hundred. Hmm. Table one gives the starting point. Yeah. Three hundred, four hundred hours minutes available, six hundred minutes available. Then hmm. we try to do a 
opportunity cost calculation net evaluation is nothing but i told here you can see the screen opportunity cost calculation yeah the 20 minutes if you don't use it it is not every every product you, for producing product one you need mm. 20 minutes of machine one 40 minutes of machine two mm. the machine is not going to give any revenue how will you say 20 minutes into zero machine is not going to get anything for you that is what you told here yeah. so 20 into 0 40 into 0 20 minutes not going to get anything for you 40 minutes not going to get anything for you that is 0 into 20 0 into 40 minus not producing the product 40 rupees is the loss okay so this is machine hours 0 plus 0 is machine yeah machine is not going to get anything for you only product will get you something you are yeah. a finished product seller yeah so 0 into 20 20 minutes revenue zero no value from the machine one 40 minutes is utilization zero revenue no nothing by keeping 40 minutes you cannot get anything that is the idea that is what we are saying so yes. finish product alone i get some money that is the logic so yes sir yes sir zero into 20 zero 20 minutes into zero rupee zero rupee 40 minutes into zero rupee zero rupee so total is by keeping 20 minutes and 40 minutes net revenue for you is zero is it clear yes sir yes sir by keeping 20 minutes with you 40 minutes with you the net revenue is zero only producing the product you will get 40 rupees so net revenue by machine keeping and the product not producing the product 40 rupees is the loss for you so the net result is minus 40 so not producing the product you are losing 40 rupees product one not producing the product you are losing 60 rupees by keeping mission 3 hour you are not going to get anything by keeping mission uh, second mission idle some hours with you you are not going to get anything customer coming to you only to get the finished product mission if you say i have mission nothing no it's of no use that is what you are communicating so opportunity cost is higher for product two so we decided to produce product two so once i decided to produce product two i consider mission one i need 40 minutes grinding packing every 1 kg packing i need 30 minutes so i just calculate how much we can produce so 400 minutes available every 1 kg i need 40 so mission grinding mission says if it is product two you can produce only maximum 10 kg that is the grinding mission situation packing machine what say it says sorry roasting machine this is roasting machine this is grinding and packing gp so grinding and packing machine says 600 minutes available every 1 kg it says 30 minutes required so grinding and packing machine says i can do up to 20 kg product 20 kg finished product but how much you can produce you can produce only 10 kg 400 minutes available 40 minutes the roasting time so only 10 so this is what feasible this is feasible so feasibility i mark that is the first situation so first situation table 1 it is saying it is x3 equal to 400 x2 x4 equal to 600 that is related to the situation x10 x20 so x3 400 x4 600 then you are doing a calculation opportunity cost calculation then you are doing the calculation ratio is nothing but feasibility calculation is it clear clear sir then we move to second table the second table is now i have finished my product two production what is the scenario so you know that some mission this mission will be fully used whereas in this mission what will happen 
you are going to produce only 10 kg after 10 kg 300 minutes the the table should reflect x4 300 am i correct the machine is having 600 minutes every 1 kg 30 minutes 30 minutes appear how many kg you are going to produce 10 kg so 10 into 30 300 minutes you are going to use it so after you produce what is the scenario so table 2 will tell you what is the scenario that is all the numbers here it will tell what is the scenario then again you will be repeating the calculation is there any opportunity cost is there any chance of feasibility again you are going to repeat the same process is it clear so let's move to the table 2 Yes, sir. Again, I just repeat the same uh, table structure. Ideally, you try to follow whatever be the table structure suitable for you in case if you have studied in your UG or the one which I am trying. Same structure, you can use it because nearly I know that uh, 50 percent of your syllabus, nearly so 25 percent of your syllabus, you will be using the same problem structure. This is called the simplex method. You will be using the same calculations, repetition, same steps. Sixty, zero, zero, and zero. I am writing the entries on the top. Then I put the header x1, x2, x3, and x4. Then I am going to compute ratio. Ratio I told is nothing but feasibility. so i keep feasibility also then the scenario the first step you are going to use completely x3 the entire roasting section you are going to use it how will you say you are completely used to roasting section that will become x3 will become zero so roasting section now 400 minutes are there you are going to produce 10 kg that means you are going to use fully the roasting machine so what you have to do one minute so we are going to use the roasting machine fully which i want to say roasting machine is used to fully so which i will be replacing here so here i will call it as instead of x3 i call it as x2 which i am going to produce and the other machine x4 that is retain no change so the first step you have to make a change in the xb xb column you are going to make change TB column also you will be making change, and the P column also you will be making change. So X2 instead of X3 I call it a X2. X4 there is no change. I use X4. Only machine one I am going to replace by product two. That is. This is machine. This machine is fully used. How will you say machine is fully used? X3 is zero. So X2 in the place. I am producing product two. So naturally you can see product two under machine two. Only this is the situation. This is machine one. Machine two is the situation. Machine one is fully used. That means machine one is not there in the left side. Then I will choose the number in the intersection. the entering column and the leaving row the number in the intersection i told the name that is called the number in the intersection we call it as pivotal element pivot element so we choose the pivot element and divide the entire row by pivot element so 400 by 40 you are getting 
20 by 40 you are getting 1 by 2 40 by 40 you are getting 1 1 by 40 then 0 that is the first step in the new table I take the number 40 and divide the entire row by 40 then you can see that 1 0 0 1 x3 and x4 you have identity matrix so x3 here you can see 1 0 0 x4 here you can see identity column so similarly I wanted to keep x2 column also identity so I keep 0 in the other places that is the next step the first step I take 40 I divide the entire row by 40 then you know that the first table x3 which is having 1 0 structure x4 again it is having 0 1 structure that is in the one in the place x4 1 the remaining place is 0 x3 the place 1 remaining place is 0 so whatever be the variable which are here they have a special structure called the identity structure column identity structure so I keep the same column identity structure x2 I keep 1 0 0 again x4 also we need to keep an identity structure is it clear could you take down up to this silent anybody Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then the remaining places we are going to fill the entries. So for the 600, we are going to replace the 600 in the table 1. In the place, we are going to replace 600. The calculation procedure, in the material, it is different. I will show you a shortcut because you need to fill only few entries. The shortcut is first you write down the number 600 write down the number 600 then minus sign for the 600 you have one row entry you have one column entry multiply these two numbers multiply these two numbers 400 into column number 30 divided by number in the intersection 40 so what is the net result? 600 minus 300 you get 300. 300. So that is the number I am writing here. Then I have to replace this number 40. So what I do? Again, similar procedure. I write the number 40 minus anyone of you can you repeat what are all the two numbers to be multiplied? 20 into 30. 20 into 30. By 40 divided by 40. Divided by 40. What is the net result? Uh, 24. Is it 24? 25. 600. Minus 600 by 40. So you get 50. Is it 25? Next result is 25. So you will be replacing this entry by 25. Then any one of you can you now tell for this place x3? We will be writing 0 minus 30 into 1 by 40. What is the net result? 30 by 40. Yeah, minus 3 by 4. 30 by 40 minus 3 by 4. So I filled in the table part. Sir, explain, explain uh, column number 3, sir. 
this one i take this zero to be replaced i write the entry zero for the zero for the column i have 30 for the row it is 1 so i write 30 into 1 divided by the number in the intersection 40 so what is the net result 0 30 by 40 or minus 3 by 4 i have written minus 3 by 4 here Is it clear? Oh, where you consider thirty, sir? Thirty and forty can. For every for every number, if you take this number six hundred, I do the calculation. First calculation six hundred. For the six hundred, I consider the number in the row, number in the column. I write number in the row, number in the column, multiplication by number in the intersection. Column number, marked column number, marked row. What are the numbers which are there divided by number in the intersection? That is for the 600. Then I repeat the calculation for 40. Okay, I repeat the calculation for 40. For the 40, the number in the intersection that is 20, 30, and 40. So 20 into 30 by 40. Net result is 25. So I have written 25 here. Then now I write repeat the calculation for this zero. Zero. I have two entries. The column it is thirty. The row it is one. So thirty into one divided by forty. Zero minus thirty into one by forty. So minus thirty by forty or minus three by four. Clear, sir. Thank you. Then I try to fill the c value for x two. What is the objective function coefficient? I write that one sixty. For x4, what is the objective function coefficient? Zero. I write this information, update this information in the table. Then, where identity matrix coming? So identity matrix coming in column two. Identity matrix coming in column four. That information I am keeping, updating. Then I am going to calculate net evaluation. Net evaluation. Net evaluation will be used as symbol. It's a J minus C J. In the textbook, if you see, you know, most of the time in the material we use the notation is a J minus C J. Some textbook they use C J minus C J. That's the reverse calculation. So it is calculation is your choice. You can uh, what is the opportunity cost? So naturally we will be using a negative number. Standard textbooks they will be using a negative number. Net evaluation is used as symbol is a J minus C J. Then any one of you can you say what is the opportunity cost for product one? We are not producing product one. What is the opportunity cost? Can you do the? Can you uh, tell the calculation for the column one in the table two? We need to calculate opportunity cost. What are all the numbers should be multiplied? Column one in table two. What are the numbers to be multiplied? No one. You have to keep this column sixty into zero. Then, then one by two and twenty-five. If you multiply, what do you get? Net result sixty into one by two that will become thirty. Zero into twenty-five that will become zero. So net result is thirty. Then minus objective function coefficient forty. So you get opportunity cost is minus ten. I find out opportunity cost for the product one. Sixty. I take the column, this column, sixty and the zero column. I multiply with one by two and twenty-five, then minus forty. 
So 60 by 0 column, 1 by 2 and 25. I multiply the respective portion, 60 into 1 by 2, 0 into 25. Net result is minus 10. Is it clear? Did you update? Then third column. Then the third column. <coughs> column three. I update column three. What are the two numbers to be multiplied? So this is standard sixty into zero. Then third column you have one by forty and minus three by four. If you multiply what you get, this number will become fifteen. This will become plus zero. Net result is fifteen. Minus top of the table we have written zero. So here opportunity cost is fifteen. Sir, previously, how do we got that 40, sir? 30 minus 40. From where we referred this 40, sir? This 40. Column 1, objective function coefficient. Column 1, objective function. I am multiplying C value with the column 1 entries. 60 into 1 by 2, 0 into 25 minus 40. Yeah, that 40... Where, where, okay, okay, function, function. Every one kilogram product one, you will get 40 rupees. Okay, That's okay. One. Okay, okay. Okay, so in that case, uh, the next column we have a uh, minus 60, is it? Yes. Can you scroll down, sir? Yes. 60 into 1, 0 into 0, net result is 0. Then 60 into 1 by 4, 40, you get. 6 by 4 are 60 into 1 by 40, sorry, 60 into 1 by 40, you get 1.5, 3 by 2, okay, sorry, I have written wrongly, 60 into 1 by 40, 1 by 40, 6 by 40, 60 by 40, 60 by 40 is 3 by 2, uh, wrongly I have written here, uh, this value, this So this is 3 by 2. 60 by 40. This calculation is now. 3 by 2. Then I find out feasibility. So to find feasibility, we have to consider only in the previous table. If you look at, we have considered minus 40 and minus 60. We are not consider positive number. We consider only negative number. Negative number stands for cost, opportunity loss. So there is only one opportunity loss not producing product 1. So that means I decided to produce product 1 also. Not producing product 1, there is an opportunity loss. That is 10 rupee. So we say that x1 should be produced. Product 1 also should be produced. So already you produced product 2, now you have started producing product 1. So you are checking feasibility. So it says 10 units available half of the time. So 10 1 by 2 you get 20. It says 20 kilograms can be produced. Second machine says 300 minutes available 25 how many? Well. So it says only 12 kilograms can be produced. So what is feasible? So feasible is product product 1 can be produced to the maximum of 12 kilograms. That is the update. That is the update. Then we will come to the last table now. We are producing product 1 also already product 2 produced, product 1 is produced. So we will check adjustments. Since I am going to produce some product 1, naturally 
here i i use full machine entire 400 minutes i am using for 10 kg since now i am going to produce product one also naturally i cannot produce this 10 kg i have to alter that is what the calculation is going to do the th table 3 is going to tell what is the adjustments so table 1 said you are going to use entire 400 minutes producing only one product but for producing product one now you need some first machine time also so naturally you will be trying to do the reworking of your production system that is the third third, third table so you can switch off your microphone mr skv prasad you can switch off your microphone thank you then in the third table again same calculation same table structure you are going to repeat the same calculation that is why the simplex method all the methods in operation research we use the methodology called the iteration so if you know one step you can repeat uh, within two three problems you will get the speed so third third table in the previous session i use drawing so it is not necessary you should have a very uh, uh, neat looking layout a scale etc you just have a manual pen drawing that is sufficient nobody is going to bother about whether your lines are straight no nothing no aesthetics only accuracy will be considered that is the reason i switched to manual drawing so don't waste time on keeping scale and drawing etc you need to calculation accuracy here so that is the reason i put it in the manual calculation mode x1 x2 x3 x4 under ratio then at the top of the table we have written 40 60 00 0. the same steps i am taking 40 60 0 and 0 then x1 is entering in the place of x4 so what i do in the second row instead of calling x4 i call it x1 this is my x column x column x1 no change in x2 so x2 will be there now the variable will be there x2 so what is the first step you have to take the number in the intersection and you have to divide the entire row by the number so 300 by 25 you get 12 25 by 25 you get 1 0 by 25 you get 0 minus 3 by 4 by 25 so you get minus 3 by 100 then 1 by 25 so i divide the entire row by 25 300 by 25 25 by 25 1 0 by 25 0 then 3 by 4 already is there divided by 25 that means 25 should be multiplied with 4 you get minus 3 by 100 then 1 divided by 25 then what is to be done the x1 column you have to make it identity x2 column you have to make identity so whatever be the variable which is here x3 x4 you are keeping identity you are bringing x2 and x4 so x2 column identity x4 column identity now you are bringing x1 and x2 so x1 column identity x2 column identity the remaining entries you have to fill it can anyone of you tell what is the value that is to be filled in x2 place this place this 10 what is to be done replacement then minus can any one of you read what is the calculation should be done then minus 
to see here what we have done. Ten minus three hundred into one by two. Three hundred into one by two divided by twenty-five. Twenty-five. So for your convenience, I write it here closely. Ten minus one by two into three hundred whole divided by twenty-five. Can you simplify? Three hundred by ten minus uh, six four. You will get one fifty as the numerator divided by twenty-five. Outer you have ten. What is the value? Six. Ten minus ten minus six four. Four. So you are getting four here. Then. X three place. X three place. What is to be done? Third column. You have to keep one by forty. That is the number to be replaced. One by forty minus. What are all the numbers to be multiplied? One into one minus one by four. One by two. Minus two. minus three by four. Minus three by four. So that Again. minus we bring it to the front. Minus minus. Written plus whole divided by twenty five. Twenty five. So what is the net result? So what is the net result? One by forty plus what is the numerator? Three denominator. Three by eight is there. Whole divided by another twenty five is there. For your understanding, I'm doing step by step. One by forty plus three by eight into twenty-five. So you get three by two hundred. So one by forty plus three by two hundred. So what is the number? Will be taking the same of 200, 200 by 40. You get 5, 5 into 1, 5 plus 3. You get 8 by 200. 2, 2, 2 by 5. Huh? 2 by 5. 2 by. That is 8, no sir. 8 by 8 into 25. Three by three hundred. Three by three hundred. Four by. Three by twenty five. One by. Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. So you get a value one by twenty five here. Then x four place. X four place. What are the number to be done? Calculation to be done. Zero minus. One by two into one divided by twenty-five. What will you get? Zero minus one by two into one by twenty-five. Minus one by fifty. Minus one by fifty. Yeah. So you get minus one by fifty. So that is the first. Thing. The filling. What will be the filling? You have done the values. Filling values. I hope you uh, you got the same answer. Uh, in your graphical method also i remember in your graphical method also you got uh, 12 and 4 vaguely i remember 12 and 4 you got the same answer you see the graphical method screen which i keep it 12 and 4 now you are getting the same answer 12 and 4 12 kg flavor 1 4 kg flavor 2 so you are your answers your steps are correct just a clarification then we wanted to find is there any opportunity cost So opportunity cost for product only is zero. Opportunity cost for product is also zero. Now opportunity cost for product that is x3 variable. So what is to be done? Any one of you? So here we need to update your x column, cb column. This is 60 and this is 40. So identity matrix in p2 column and p1 column. If you want to keep it a full table, then 
for the x3 column what are the entries to be multiplied 60 and 40 to be multiplied with 1 by 25 minus 3 by 100 what is the net result So we get 4 by 5 minus 120 by 100, 120 by 100. So if we keep 10 as a the common, so 24 minus 12, 12 by 10. What is the simplification? On simplification, what will you get? Six by five. Six by five. Six by five. So on simplification, you get six by five. That is your one part minus the top of the table. You have zero. So you get a result six by five. Can you repeat similar thing for column four? What you have to do? You will be taking sixty and forty. You have to multiply with the minus one by fifty and the one by twenty-five. So you get minus six by five one value. Plus 40 by 25, which is nothing but 8 by 5. On simplification, 2 by 5. 2 by 5 minus get 0 again. You get 2 by 5. So there are no opportunity cost. So you are stopping the problem. No opportunity. Past this, no negative numbers here and here. So these are the uh, steps which you will be repeating in almost all the problems. All your simplex method. you will be using the same step so you can see the scribbling pad could you see that could you see the screen scribbling pad you see so many, you see so many numbers so unless otherwise you practice parallelly you cannot really try this in the examination i am not threatening but this is a subject which will pull your red it is something like a cycle training you are you are practicing a cycle first time it will be appear to be very difficult two wheeler training first time when you try it will be appear to be very difficult car so many things in the dashboard you will find difficult to use very similar thing the only difficulty part of this subject is you see the calculations these are all the calculations which we never attempt in our life fraction multiplication fraction division this is the one which requires lot of concentration when you write examination so unless or if you concentrate and uh, do the calculation it will be very difficult to complete a problem and in case if you do any mistake in the previous stages you cannot rectify your mistakes that is the problem if you do any mistake you don't know whether you have done any mistake say here you see when you multiply 60 into 1 by 2 you have done some calculation here 12 by 5 minus 12 by 10 you straight away return 6 by 5 12 by 10 instead of 12 by 10 if you write 12 by 10 12 by 5 your entire answer will be wrong so there is chance or there are chances 
always because you are doing lot of posting also from this table to this table this table to this table after the calculation you are again coming back to the table so there is always a chance posting error you see 12 6 by 5 but when you write you write 5 by 6 so this kind of errors is common in this subject unless otherwise you concentrate and you practice this subject will be a difficult subject for you so practice the problem maybe in the next class we will take a lighter topic uh, transportation models any clarification so just one question huh? in the last table you say no opportunity cost that is no negative number which means uh, we will yield only profit there is no point of uh, spending is it uh, the other way of understanding yes yes so here you get first table you are not producing anything 40 rupees loss 60 rupees loss product one product two then you are coming to the table one not producing product one some 10 rupee loss is there still then final table you are if negative comes here we are not bothered <laughs> Negative only in product one product. Yeah, we'll stop here. We'll continue in the next session. Thank you. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. सर 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 हेलो गुड गुड यस 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 एवरीवन प्रसन्न हियर Yeah, will we start now, or do you need any break? We can start, sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Can you remember what we discussed in previous class? I am. Sir, I am a NPP lover. Then uh, we were doing internal uh, the simulate of return method. Okay. So uh, those things comes under second unit, na? So we started first unit last class, cost of capital, right? Yes. So under the cost of capital, I think cost of uh, debt we already discussed. And I have shared uh, um, uh, sheet also, Google sheet also, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, this is a cost of debt. Can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 So last class we discussed about cost of debt. If in case of uh, cost of uh, what is called irredeemable debt and redeemable debt, if uh, they are asking to calculate cost of irredeemable debt, what is the concept is called irredeemable debt? Also we discussed in the previous class. Uh, if in case of once the debt is collected by the uh, any corporation or company. um the uh, expiry time uh, time or uh, life of the instrument will be up to equal to life of the company so they will uh, when the company is going to wind up by the time only they will collect back just in it hello asal pa yeah sir okay okay class start i think ha okay so uh, there will not any maturity period for irredeemable debt the maturity period is up to lifetime 
So, uh, if in case of cost of irredeemable, uh, irredeemable debt is given by them, how to calculate the cost of debt? We have discussed it um, in last class, and cost of uh, redeemable debt also we have discussed in the previous class. Um, so, if you are going to uh, check uh, Excel sheet once again, you come to understand. And this is the next one. Preference share capital. We are going to discuss about preference share capital. If in case of debt to finance is entirely different from uh, preference share as well as the equity uh, finance, uh, because for debt to finance, the company have to pay uh, um, interest as a return, whether the company any profit or not, is irrespective. They have to arrange finance for payment of interest. So how much the cost will be there to raise uh, uh, fund through the debt to uh, debt to finance, uh, like um, issue of bonds or issue of dividends, etc., like that. So here, the preference uh, for preference share capital as well as uh, equity share capital, there are the two types of shares: preference share and equity shares. The preference shareholders are having rights to get a dividend, preferential uh, uh, rights to get dividend, as well as the company. When the company is going to wind up, by the time they will get uh, face value of shares before settling to the equity shareholders. So they have preferential rights in two two aspects. One is to get dividend from the company before settlement to the equity shareholder, and second one is they will get compensation or a claim from the company when company going for wind up before settling to the equity shareholder. If in case of company obtained loss, so the board of in board of directors meeting they decided to uh, um, wind up the company. By that time they will settle uh, that settlement process is called liquidation. They will settle in, uh, in order like uh, secured creditors, unsecured creditors, like the mortgage loan, uh, non mortgage loan, then next to the um, any other uh, bank borrowings, and next to creditors, and next to uh, like um, uh, preference shareholder. If after settlement to the preference shareholder, company have any excess amount, uh, that excess amount will go to equity shareholder. Otherwise, they don't have any rights to participate in the company um, uh, meeting. They don't have any rights to uh, vote for or against to the uh, management decision. So this is called, uh, there are the many type of preference shares, uh, like redeemable preference share, irredeemable, cumulative preference share, non-cumulative preference share, convertible, non-convertible, and participative. In case of redeemable preference share, um, the company will come back, uh, come forward to redeem back their uh, preference share after 10 years, after uh, um, 20 years, whatever the maturity period is mentioned by them. In case of irredeemable, they will not mention any time. So it will uh, the lifetime of uh, irredeemable preference share is always com uh, come with the lifetime of uh, uh, company. When company going for wind up, by the time only uh, the uh, share, uh, preference shares will be uh, taking back by the company. So if you want to realize into cash, you can realize into cash in the market. You can transfer to anyone, not issue. Cumulative preference share means um, normally equity shareholders don't have accumulation uh, option to get dividend. For example, if two, three years company obtained loss, um, the equity shareholder don't have any rights to ask previous year uh, profit sharing because the company obtained a loss. Same like that, ordinary equity, ordinary preference shareholder don't have any rights to get accumulated dividend. For example, companies obtained last for two years, last two years. Uh, due to this reason, they unable to distribute dividend to the uh, preference shareholder because the dividend means profit sharing. When company obtained loss, they cannot issue profit sharing. It's the loss only, no? So, uh, the cumulative nature means where two years or last few years, dividend is not paid by the company due to loss, that amount can accumulate and company uh, have to distribute to the preference shareholder when they are uh, earning the profit. It is a natural is called cumulative. Non-cumulative means the current year dividend only they can get. Preference shareholders don't have any rights to get uh, past year dividend if in case of company obtain loss. Convertible preference share, uh, after certain year, uh, preference share will convert into some other nature like equity share or debentures, etc. And non convertible is opposite to that one. Participative preference share means normally when preference share is issued by them, uh, participative preference share is issued by them, um, uh, they have rights to participate in the excess profit as well as the excess asset. They are the, this type of uh, um, share is called a participative preference share. Normally, when company issuing the preference share, ordinary preference share, they will fix uh, rate of dividend to the preference shareholder. 
the preference shareholder cannot get more than the what rate fixed by the company for example 10% preference share 15% preference share means out of face value only 10% 15% even only they can get from the company but in case of equity shareholder company will not fix any fixed rate of dividend because they are considered as real owner of the company whatever the excess profit after payment of tax to the government that all excess profit that is called earnings available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares so yeah, equity share uh, per, per equity share yeah, investor can get or shareholder can get uh, for every 100 rupee face value of shares may possible to get 20 rupees 25 rupees 30 rupees it may fluctuate year to year sometimes 0 rupee uh, sometimes 5 rupee but preference shareholder is not like that it wants fixed means for 15 percent means every 100 rupee value of face value of uh, preference share they can get 15 rupees dividend from the company so when they are issuing the participative preference share by the time they will fix fix the rate of dividend to the equity shareholders too because they will settle all interest to the interest to the all debenture holders or bank loan and etc if there is excess profit they will um, pay dividend to preference shareholder um, at determined rate like 10 percent 12 percent after paying fixed rate of dividend to the preference shareholder they will pay fixed rate of dividend to the like 20 percent or 25 percent fixed rate of dividend to the equity shareholder after payment of that fixed rate of dividend to equity shareholder if there is any excess profit uh, participative preference share and equity shareholders both are will share uh, uniformly equally same like that um, participative preference shareholders have rights to get excess asset or participate in the excess asset normally they have rights to get um, um, a claim from the company up to face value face value of preference share is 100 means they can get only 100 rupee when company going for wind up but participative preference share after paying 100 rupee to the preference shareholder after paying 100 rupee or 10 rupee whatever the equity share face value after paying that if there is excess asset value preference shareholder and equity shareholder will share uniformly so uh, these are the nature this is the one uh, uh, performer or uh, B uh, preference share certificate. So I'm sharing, you, you can uh, see later. So to calculate the cost of preference share, uh, here also we have to uh, check whether redeemable preference share or irredeemable preference share because the annual uh, expenditure will, will vary from redeemable to irredeemable. If in case of irredeemable, um, only uh, we already seen uh, what are the things comes under the annual cost. Only dividend is considered as annual cost. If in case of uh, a redeemable, um, uh, after uh, certain years, we are going to redeem. So that whatever the annual expenditure like uh, dividend or uh, any issue expenses or premium on redemption or discount on issue, these are all the expenses we have to divide or amortize according to the N number of years or maturity period. To calculate cost of irredeemable preference share, annual preference dividend due to be net proceeds. I already said, I already explained about the net proceeds in the previous class when we were discussing about cost of debt. A net proceeds, if in case of issued at par or issued at uh, premium, issued at discount, etc. Everything we have seen. Uh, if in case of net proceeds, uh, preference share issued at par. Can you follow me? Hello. Hello. Yes, okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, uh, preference share issued at par. Uh, net proceeds is equal to face value minus issue expenses. Um, preference share issued at premium, net proceeds equal to face value of preference share plus premium minus issue expenses. And preference share issued at discount, face value minus discount minus issue expenses. This is a procedure. If in case of cost of redeemable preference share, annual cost divided by average value of redeemable preference share. Annual cost, I already said, uh, I already shared the um, uh, Format also uh, annual dividend in addition to that any issue expenses due to by maturity period in addition to that issue of uh, issue on discount how much the discount value in addition to that premium on reduction how much the premium value we have to divide for uh, 10 years or 20 years so next one average value of uh, RPS redeemable preference share RPS means redeemable preference share net proceeds plus redeemable value by two net proceeds um, we already discussed any one of three method will come we have to calculate either issued at par or issued at premium or issued at discount which method is adopted by the company we have to follow that one and redeemable 
um, value redemption value means whether the company agreed to get back the preference share for face value or for discount or for premium 99.9% the company will not say the company will going for redeem preference share at discount if once they are saying means the people or investor will not come forward to invest in that company because for every 100 rupee you will get 90 rupee after 10 years means who will come to purchase our shares definitely no one will come so always either company will go for redeem rate par or company will go for redeem rate premium it is attractive scheme so after 10 year each and every investor can get 10 rupee additionally as premium um, from the from the company for every share if they have 10000 shares 10000 into 10 rupees they will get as gain capital income okay so this is uh, average value of redeemable preference share how to calculate average value like annual preference dividend uh issue expenses issue expenses if, uh, for example 50000 given by them means for 10 years 50000 divided by 10 for every year we have to take a discount on issue of uh, shares amortized amortized means we have to convert per year and uh, premium on redemption of shares per annum um less if you have issued preference shares for premium the premium is considered as income to us so we have to deduct that income the net amount is called annual cost okay i'm going to share uh, google sheet can you see this one yes sir okay yes sir so this is information given by them uh, cost of irredeemable preference shares they are asking to calculate cost of irredeemable preference shares like midras company limited issued 60000 15% irredeemable preference share rupees 100 each the issue expenses were 60000 rupees determine the cost of preference share capital if shares issued at par or b option at a premium of 10% or c at a discount of 5% this information given by them and just so give on one minute sir we will note the problem then we will have the discussion okay 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 we will analyze the problem okay preference shares of 100 each issue expenses determine Issued at par means what does it mean, sir? At par. So for every hundred rupees, uh, uh, preference share they will issue for hundred rupees. Okay, the same cost it. At hundred yes, rupees uh, mentioned in the data in the problem, that is a yes. face value par. Yes. So the they will issue for face value. It is called par. So KP cost of irredeemable preference share capital, sir. That is denoting. Yes. Annual. preference dividend by net proceeds into 100 okay shall we proceed Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So the they issued sixty thousand uh, preference share per share is hundred rupee. So face value is total um, uh, face value of sixty thousand divided is equal to, sorry preference share is equal to sixty lakhs. Okay. So to calculate the net proceeds, what is the procedure to calculate net proceeds? You issued at par face value minus issue expenses, right? Minus how much issue expenses? They said sixty thousand rupees, right? So 
so the net proceeds uh, 59 lakh 60000 sorry 40000 69 lakh 40000 is considered as net proceeds right yes sir okay so what is our formula annual preference dividend divided by net proceeds so how much is the annual preference dividend if you are going to apply the percentage of preference dividend into face value you will get annual preference dividend so 15 percent on uh, 60 lakh rupees so dividend is equal to 60 lakhs into 15 percent is it 9 lakhs sir yes 9 lakh rupees 9 lakh rupees is considered as preference dividend so okay so now you can calculate we have both the data now you can calculate the cost of preference share is equal to cost of preference share is equal to annual preference dividend how much annual preference dividend 9 lakh Divided by net proceeds, fifty nine lakh. Nine lakh divided by fifty nine lakh forty thousand into hundred. Yes. Okay. Fifteen point one five, sir. Fifteen point. Into 100 is equal to how much this one? 15.15. Uh, 15.15. Okay. 15.15. 15.15 percentage. Okay. So this is the answer for first one. Uh, next one is what they are asking to calculate. Next one. Net person premium. Yes. B. Issued at 10% premium. Okay. So, how much 10% premium on face value? So, premium, premium is equal to 60 lakhs into 10%. It's equal to 6 lakh. Na? Okay, so now you can calculate net proceed for this one. So NP is equal to so face, face value, value plus premium sir. sixty lakh yes plus premium of six minus lakh. issue expenses minus issue expenses. So it's equal to sixty five lakh forty thousand na. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, is, yes, there is no change in uh, dividend, right? Dividend will not change according to discount or according to premium. Dividend always calculating on face value. Okay. So now, uh, cost of preference share is equal to 9 lakh divided by 65 lakh 40,000 into 100. 65 lakh 40,000 is equal to how much is one? Calculating, sir. Okay. Huh? How much? 13.76. No? Okay. 13.76. You see, the cost of preference share is uh, reduced from 15.15 because impact of premium. We have received it. Six lakh rupees additionally in, uh, in along with the face value, na, that six lakh rupees made um, to reduce the cost of preference share. Okay, then and option C. With the general sense, if it is a discount, uh, uh, then uh, it will the cost of the cost will go up, no sir? Yes, 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 definitely. So, the next one is third option. 
इंश्योरेंस डिस्काउंट ना डिस्काउंट अट फाइव परसेंट ओके now we can calculate 5% discount on 60 lakh rupees so discount is equal to 60 lakh 3 lakh 5% 5%, 5% 3 lakhs na 3 lakh 3 lakhs okay so now the same procedure we can apply net proceeds yeah cost of profit share is equal to Net proceeds divided by sorry dividend divided by net proceeds. How much is net proceeds? It took all clear, na. So net yeah. proceeds equal to sixty lakh minus discount three lakhs minus issue expenses sixty thousand, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Fifty-seven minus sixty. Is it fifty? Fifty-six lakh forty thousand, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Fifty-six lakh forty thousand, right? Fifty-six lakh forty thousand. Yes, fifty-six lakh forty thousand. So this will be. How much? How much is one? You have to. So definitely, it will be more than first two. Ah, more than first two. That is okay, sir. Yes. Nine lakh. It will come around fifteen lakh. Uh, sorry, fifteen point nine six percent each. Fifteen point nine five. Ah, nine five. There is a fifteen point nine five, sir. Fifteen point nine. Okay. So this is a procedure. Uh, definitely, a company cannot go for uh, um, using all three method. Out of three, uh, they will go, going to choose with the consideration of uh, market factor and demand in the market, etc. So normally, if they are going to issue a discount. Only reputed company may possible to go and issue a discount. um sorry reputed company can go for issue at premium or if any normal company facing financial problem their financial position is not good in the market uh, not good or they don't have a reputation in the market definitely if they want finance they have to go for raise preference share capital only by issue of discount understand so the yield what they are going to get by using the preference share capital that will compensate the loss due to the issue of uh, preference share uh, in discount So this is the procedure. Do you have any doubt? So yeah, could you please explain the significance of these percentages? Ah, okay. This percentage final result, na? Yeah, yes, sir. Fifteen point one five. If a company plan to uh, raise sixty lakh rupees capital by issue of uh, preference share, if they issued at par each and every year, the cost will be incurred for the company fifteen point one five percentage. 15.15 means you apply 15.15 on 60 lakh rupees. That will be annual cost to the company. That will be constant. When when company any profit. If company not any profit, it is ordinary preference share. They no need to worry about the uh, accumulated dividend, right? If when company any profit, that time only they have to pay 9 lakh rupees as dividend. If company obtained loss, they no need to worry about 9 lakh rupees. This is the nature of share. Once you invested into share, it means you are uh, part of owner of the concern. Either uh, if you are going for uh, um, invest in uh, preference share, the preference share rate is always more than uh, dividends because uh, they are accepting some uh, market risk. If company obtaining loss, they will lose their uh, annual return. Okay. So if in case of company can able to issue a premium. The annual cost incurred for company thirteen point seven six percent out of sixty lakh rupees. If company going to use this sixty lakh rupees up to life uh, uh, life of the company life of the concern because it is irredeemable uh, uh, preference share. So this sixty lakh rupees will be the company up to winding up of business. 
So until winding up, they have to pay 13.76 percentage as cost from 60 lakh rupees. Understand? So the best one is 13.76. Uh, where the company go ahead? Is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first one is 13.76 percent only. First one, 15.15, na? No, the first one, where it is after one is 13.76, na, sir? Ah, thirteen point seven six. It is optimum one. Uh, also, they have the thing. Normally, they are going to issue a premium. They will get gain in cost of uh, um, capital because they are collecting extra than the face value. Na, they are collecting ten rupees extra than the hundred rupee. So normally, they are collecting hundred and ten rupee from um, shareholder, right? So that ten rupee compensating all other expenses, all other uh, annual cost. That is the reason it is got reduced to thirteen point seven six percentage. Okay. okay. So, next one. Do you have any other doubt in area removal for front share? Okay. Shall we move to next one? Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, this is the next problem cost of redeemable for front share. Redeemable yes, means. Sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. I think someone trying to ask question. Sir, give me one minute, sir. We will make a note of the problem. Okay. Yes, we have to discuss a number of things. That is the reason. So I already shared uh, this sheet also. You can copy from that one. Yes, sir. we copy from the sheet, sir, after the class. Ah, yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, so let me explain first. Otherwise, we may going to skip a number of problems. Okay, sir. So if it is coming, take a picture right. of the screen and then note it. Ah, okay. So this is the next one. If in case of redeemable preference share, when company issuing prospector, uh, prospector itself, they will mention the company will go for redeem back the preference share issued by them after a certain number of years. So here they mention uh, 20 years. Asian uh, Company Limited issued 15,000 12 percent preference shares of rupees 100 each, uh, redeemable at 10 percent premium. You see, they agreed to redeem at 10 percent premium, so it will be benefit to the shareholder. To attract the shareholder, the company agreed to issue redeemable at premium means for every 100 rupee um, redeemable preference share, they will pay 110 rupee. That is called a 10 percent premium. When after 20 year, so the 20 year is maturity period. The flotation cost were five percent. Flotation cost means uh, issue expenses is called flotation cost. Were five percent. Find out the cost of preference share capital. Uh, if shares are issued at par, same like that, at a premium of five percent and at a discount of ten percent. Yes. I request others can others can learn. What sir? So I can't get what you are selling. What you are telling? You feel some disturbance? Okay, 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 okay. 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 So. So all uh, they are trying to calculate. They are asking to calculate in all three methods: par, premium, as well as a discount. Um, same procedure we are going to apply, but formula is different. Cost of preference share is equal to annual cost divided by average value of redeemable preference share. So how to calculate annual uh, 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 annual cost as well as average value of redeemable preference share? We already applied the same methodology in calculating cost of uh, redeemable debentures. The same methodology uh, we are going to apply here, but the nature of uh, instrument is different. That one is a debenture, this one is a, a preference share. So first uh, we'll calculate a dividend, a face value. These are all the in basic information we can calculate. How much is a dividend? How much is the issue expenses, etc. These are all the basic expenses. If once the issue expenses given by them in uh, uh, value, no problem. Now they are given in uh, percentage. So how much company going to raise finance from that finance, from that capital, um, uh, they agree to give 
five percent uh, issue expenses. It is called a flotation cost. So face value is equal to fifteen thousand divisions. Sorry, fifteen thousand preference shares into hundred each. It will be fifteen lakhs, na? It is fifteen lakh. Yes, fifteen lakhs. And dividend? Dividend. Dividend equal to twelve percent on fifteen lakh. Yes. Into twelve percent, twelve by hundred. That is. Uh, It will come around one lakh eighty thousand rupees. One lakh eighty thousand. Yes. And now we can calculate. Um, shares issued at par and redeemed at a redeemed at ten percent premium. Okay, they agree to redeem a ten percent premium. The ten percent premium on redemption will applicable for all three option, either issued at par, either issued at premium, as well as redeemed at premium, uh, either uh, are going for issue at discount. So this ten percent premium on redemption will applicable for in all cases. So now we are going to calculate annual cost. If the company going for issued at par, what will be the annual cost? So dividend always there. Company have to bear the dividend charges in addition to that issue expenses, right? Yes, sir. And uh, flotation cost, uh, issue expenses and premium on redemption. So preference dividend, annual dividend. How much the dividend? One lakh eighty thousand rupees. We already calculated, right? Yes, sir. One lakh eighty thousand rupees annual dividend, and plus issue expenses or flotation cost. Flotation cost on fifteen lakh rupees into how many percentage? Five percent, na? Yes, flotation cost were five percent. How much five percent on fifteen lakh? Five percent on fifteen lakh. Seventy-five thousand. How much? Seventy-five thousand. Yes, seventy-five thousand applicable for all twenty years, na? So now we are calculating per annum. So divided by twenty. 20 years preference share na so 75000 applicable for entire 20 years so how much for one year 3750 ah uh, 3750 rupees 50 rupees okay then in along with plus premium on redemption 10% Premium on redemption, right? When after twenty years, when company going to collect back fifteen thousand debenture, they have to pay ten rupee along with the hundred rupee of face value. These also additional expenses to the company. These expenses will come when company going for wind up after twenty years. So that ten percent is applicable for entire ten years, right? Sorry, entire twenty years. So, fifteen lakh face value into 
ten percent. How much? It will be one lakh fifty thousand by twenty. You divided by twenty years. Yes. Seven thousand five hundred. Seven thousand five hundred rupees. Yes. So, is there any other expenses? Suppose if company issued a discount, issued at a premium, what will do? I am asking about next stage, next uh, option. Company issued a ten percent premium. What will do with this cost? These are all the additional charges to the company. If company issued a premium means that will be gain to the company, right? Yes, sir. That gain we have to reduce from this annual cost. How much we are going to get gain? That means the ten percentage on every hundred rupee. That means ten rupee for twenty years. How much you are going to get as benefit from fifteen thousand divanjas per annum? The same procedure we have to deduct from this total cost. How much the total annual cost? It will be one lakh ninety one thousand two fifty. Na, this called the annual cost. Okay. Okay. So, what is our formula? Annual cost. We already calculated annual cost. Annual cost divided by average value of RPS. So, to calculate average value of RPS. Um, Value of RPS is equal to net proceeds plus redemption value divided by two. Divided by two. Okay. So we calculated uh, net proceeds, redemption value. Redemption. What is called redemption value? So redemption value is equal to for um, every fifteen thousand divanja, the company agreed to pay ten percent premium, na. So how much the company how to pay back after twenty years, along with the fifteen lakh. So here redemption value is equal to face value plus ten percent premium on redemption, right? That means this average value of redeemable preference share is says how much the net amount you have collected from the market, right? Net proceeds means how much you have collected from the market. Plus, how much you have to pay back to the preference shareholders after 20 years? If you are going to take average, you will get average value of redeemable preference share, right? So, how much uh, um, redeemable value? 15 lakh plus 10 percent. 16 lakh 50 thousand. 16 lakh 50 thousand. 16 lakh 50 thousand. Fifty thousand. Okay, so sixteen lakh fifty thousand rupees. This is the redemption value, right? So now average value of RPS. Eight um, lakhs twenty-five thousand. RPS is equal to um, how much uh, net proceeds? Net proceeds. We didn't calculate, na? We yes, have not you. calculated for yes, this yes. model, sir. Earlier yes, we yes. calculated. Ah, yes, yes. So now we can calculate. So net proceeds equal to face face value fifteen lakhs, na? Fifteen lakhs yeah. minus issue expenses. How much issue expenses? Seventy five thousand, right? Flotation cost. Seventy five thousand, na? Yes, sir. Okay. So how much is one? Uh, 14 lakh 25,000. 14 lakh 25,000. Okay. So now we can calculate. 
so average value of redeemable preference share 14,25,000 plus uh, 14,25,000 plus, plus 16,50,000 yes, 16,50,000 rupees 30,75,000 divided by 2 yes that is uh, 15,37,500 how much it will be? It's equal to 15, uh, 37, 500. 500. This is called average value of uh, uh, redeemable preference share, right? Now we can apply the formula. Now uh, annual cost. Annual cost divided by average value of redeemable preference share. 1,91,000 so, is equal to 1 lakh 91,250 91, divided by. 15 lakh 37,500 into 100. 100. Uh, it will be 12.44 4, 4 percentage, right? Okay. Do you have any doubt in this? Hello, any one of you? Do you have any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. okay. So, the same procedure you are going to apply for all uh, other two methods. Can you apply now? Other uh, two methods means problems, no, sir. Issued at uh, discount ah, or B. Yes. Oh. yes. Alternatives, two options ah. for another two options. So only one change when you are going to calculate for premium. Um, when you are calculating the flotation cost, if in case of shares issued at premium, we have to take face value plus premium into five percentage. Right? The intermediate flotation cost means issue expenses. The company may agree to give some five percent, ten percent to the intermediate there may be the agent or uh, many underwriting company who agreed to sell the shares on behalf of company or some other uh, share agent share traders etc okay so normally they will not uh, agree to get less than the face value at the same time if company going to get benefit while the company going for issue they will request to give or they will demand to give a share from the benefit also so if in case of company issuing at premium, issuing shares or uh, debentures at premium, if flotation cost mentioned in percentage, the percentage of flotation, flotation cost is applicable on face value along with the premium on issue. Right? So here the premium on issue is 5%. Uh, right? When you are going to calculate um, cost of so sorry to disturb you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I need some cl clarification on yes, uh, how we arrived at sixteen lakhs fifty thousand, sir. Are we well to? Yes. Are we means redeem, redeem, redeemable value. That means uh, uh, after twenty years, when company going for winding up, uh, sorry, company going for get back the shares, na. It is the okay. agreement between the shareholders to company. After twenty years, company how to return back the money of shareholders? And they have to get back the document keeping by the preference shareholder, right? So at the initial stage, what company agreed, after 20 years, when we are going to return back your money, we will give 10% addition to the face value. That is called redeemable value or redemption oh. value. Can you understand? Yeah, yeah. So 10% of which value, sir? Redemption that 15%. That 15 lakhs. Face value. 10% of face value plus 15 lakhs will give us the 16 lakhs. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay, for, so every, for every 100 rupee, company agreed to pay 10% premium at the time of redeem. For every 100 rupee, 10% means how many total shares or how much the total face value, right? So the total face value is 15 lakhs. On 15 lakhs, company agreed to give 10% premium. 
at the time of redemption after 20 years okay uh, okay sir uh, you are telling for the premium or for 10% but when you are uh. calculating the flotation value first we calculated for a 15 lakhs now we'll be calculating for the 10% so 16 lakhs 50000 will be cal calculating the flotation cost 5% Preference share uh, if issued at premium, na. Okay. So when you are going to calculate the annual cost, okay annual cost right so what are the things will come here like previous uh, one dividend na annual dividend 1.8 lakhs yes. annual dividend 1.8 lakh 80000 180000 okay along with this one flotation cost is uh... when you are calculating flotation cost 10% extra uh, Yeah, ten percent extra. Extra. It is applicable only for premium. Okay, so fifteen lakh. For this value, na. Okay, yes. Sir. Plus premium. How much the premium? How much the 